episode of Sailing Nanji. We sail under a rainbow, beginning our windless passage to Honiara, squall hopping and torrential rain avoiding our way west. It's a race against time to pick Mali up from the airport with limited fuel and no wind. I think we're going to sail through a rainbow. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Sailing through a rainbow. Yo, kitty! <laughs> Turning into a double? Huh? little light breeze and so we're sailing at that up until about an hour ago and now we are drifting in a westerly direction which is good at 1.5 knots we're making ground and that's all that matters laundry on my watch while we've got these light winds just trying to keep my mind off how slow we're going and um, get as many jobs done as we can wait for this wind not a lot going on but plenty of sunshine for three long days and three long nights we slowly sailed drifted and occasionally motored west towards the next landmass of Makira Island the journey from the Santa Cruz Islands to Makira is 220 nautical miles. Usually this trip with a favourable wind should take us 48 hours. Yep, I'm pretty sure that means all the different types of clouds are here. We had a cumulus congestus. It uh, can produce moderate to heavy showers. We might get some rain later. That's it. Not one single cloud above us. We have all this going on around us. Fish jumping. Whether they're little tuna or whether they're bonito or I hope it's little tuna because I'm starving. Yeah, oh, you're kidding me! Oh, he's still there, I can see it, eh? Hey? Here we go. Oi, we're on here. Oh, it is having a sniff. Seriously, like I am. So many fish are nailing it, but they're not getting hooked. Oh, he's down here. Oh, they're, they're nailing it, but they're just not getting hooked. Oh. Fifteen times to get up there, you're worthy of at least fifteen minutes. After three days of hot sunshine and smooth seas, the morning of day four was cloudy, overcast and squalls all around. With winds in front of rain, we jumped from squall to squall trying to utilise the wind from each weather system. on day number four. Uh, we really need some wind to um, make 
made some real progress. We've only done about 130 nautical miles, so pretty slow. Good morning, Rob Dog. Wave to the people. Once again, we have light winds and smooth seas. But uh, yeah, we're actually making a little bit of progress this morning. We're probably doing about four and a half knots, so it's probably the fastest we've done the whole trip. Yeah. We have 50 nautical miles left to go. Uh, if we keep going at this pace and the conditions stay the same, we should arrive uh, to landfall um, this afternoon, hopefully before dark. Yeah, tell us the story. So with Molly's import permit, it was, it was due like two weeks ago, uh, but Jet Pets have been really um, good about the whole thing and um, understanding. And so like he's only just gone in there today. So until today, we haven't, we didn't know if Molly is going to come back to us or not. So like, it's just like, Molly's coming back. Woo! Oh, I can't believe it. Woo! Now we just have to concentrate on getting there. Yeah, so now we don't have to stress about getting there. Um, we've to got a sort week. It all out. Yeah, we've got a week to get there, and he's coming back. We're gonna get our little man back for Christmas. I can't believe it. You. This is what's been so upsetting. How exciting! Oh, I know. I little Marley man. The boat just isn't the same without that little guy. He just makes everything so much better. Yeah. So, yeah, we can't wait to have him back on board again. Makira, that's the island where we're at, is home to the legendary Kakamora, a short, hairy and wild race of humanoids. So, I want to go find a Kakamora. <laughs> says that uh, they used to live in the on some of these islands in the Solomons, living in the bush, so I think they're pretty scared of actual humans. But these humanoids uh, has never actually been proven, but archaeological evidence suggests that such a race may have existed, and one was caught in 69, but escaped. After seven days at sea, it was nice to head to land quickly in search of cash, fuel and humanoids. We tied the tender on the beach in front of a little village and walked the beach into town. Once in town, we felt a very unpleasant vibe. We were not greeted with many friendly smiling faces and judging on the condition of the bank, it was not looking good for us to find what we were looking for. So we left town with our tail between our legs. Couldn't get cash out here, our car's not supported once again. Uh, we got no fuel. We've got 78 litres left in Nanji and at least it was good because we found out there's torrential rain coming in the next 24 hours. Hello! So... But the humanoids? We couldn't find out about any humanoids. People here weren't very friendly, they didn't really want to chat. So, oh, we'll just get back to Nanji and we'll just do what we can. We've got seven days to get to Honiara. Yeah. Hello! Hello! <laughs> Chilisa! Chilisa! Oh, that's a beautiful name. <laughs> Wanting to leave the anchorage, but with the weather looking gloomy, we only sailed a short distance, 15 nautical miles, to Uki Ni Masi Island, anchoring on the lee side, hoping for protection from the incoming weather warning. 
Waking the following day to sunshine and a headwind, it was good to wake refreshed and ready for the next four days and four long nights of non-stop sailing upwind. Oh, we're up. So with that severe weather warning yesterday, uh, we checked our weather reports and it didn't look like it was going to affect us, so we weren't sure what to do, but we uh, played it safe and hid behind an island um, and uh, waited it out for the night. We didn't want to be sailing in torrential rain with lightning and stuff, so um, yeah, and uh, it's uh, passed over us. Um, we had lightning going on around us, but it wasn't actually um, as bad. Uh, for where we were, but some of the other islands, if you looked around, they were copping it sweet. So, yeah, I think we did the right thing, and um, yeah, we're setting sail today, and uh, we've got 150 nautical miles left to go. And we've been out here sailing all day, and we're just not making any ground. This, the seas are just too choppy, and we can't pound into it. And we struggle between three and four knots. We're taking a bit more on the beam now, and the wind's swinging from the north to the northwest. So we try to go one way and then we get pushed too far south so we'll change then we start getting pushed east. Like it's, it's really hard. The ocean's confused. So it's just got like a northerly swell and then a westerly swell. So there's just this little washing machine. The wind coming from the northwest and now it's just dropped out to nothing. Bobbing around with flapping sails. It seems like there's a current that we're trying to sail into. Because we're just drifting east now. With the wind dropping out, the choppy sea soon did the same. Before too long, we had calm waters and a gentle headwind. Sailing to another night, the line started fizzing, and Yoshi's on! What way are we going? We're going south, south, yeah. Yeah, we're doing one knot, we're all right. You're kidding! Look at this for a chona. Oh. Look at the size of the head. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So you kind of caught a fish. <laughs> oh, look at the size of this thing. Its head, just this bit here weighs easily 10 kilos. Imagine the size of the shark that nailed it. Oh man. After catching the tuna head last night, I was washing down the decks, getting all the blood off the decks and the bedroom hatches were open, the side hatches, I didn't notice. Bonita might have passed mentioned that they were open, but I was in GSD mode and I poured a bucket of water over the decks and I washed all tuna blood and guts into the bedroom all over the bed. So you could say that Oh, I'm in the doghouse today. Benita's not real happy with me. So the boat stinks like tuna. So I've been cleaning, cleaning all the decks this morning again, and now I've got to get in the bedroom and finish cleaning that. <laughs> For the final 48 hours of passage, even though it was headwind, it was great to have a consistent 15 knot breeze. With constant squalls all around and thunderstorms over land at night, we tacked our way up the indispensable strait between Malaita and Guadalcanal Islands. I was trying to do the right thing and dry all the pillows and stuff out, and the wind picked up a little bit and we lost one of our main pillows, our couch cushion. Just really I want Benita to practice with the gaff. <laughs> You've been a real pain in the butt lately, Osh. <laughs> like yesterday you, you washed tuna guts all over the bed and now you've lost my bloody pillow that I made. <laughs> get underneath it and then just hook, hook it up. Go get him, go get him! Oh, she can gaff! This girl can gaff! I mean, we had a bit of a scare then. We've seen this little red banana boat fanging up from a distance. It's all normal, you know, you see lots of them, but it just kept coming and it came right up on our arse end here. It's got 10 blokes in it, all on the cans. They fanged it right up, literally next to Nanji here, and got Nanji barreled. And like, yeah, full come up, just staring, screaming. 
and then fanged across in front, went up in front of us, and they just stopped, and they, we've just sailed past them again. So, staring at us? They were staring. Yeah, they were staring at us, checking us out. I don't think there's any pirates here or nothing, but still, ten blokes in one little boat, banging after you. Yeah. They come full on the inside of Nanji here. You would have missed us by like 200 mil, like literally, and then cut across our bow, like got so close to us. Yeah. We're just unsure about this place because we've been warned, hey. Yeah, we just don't know. We've been told Honiara's not the best place. Don't go out at dark. It's not real safe. So judging on the friendliness of the, uh, that other island we went to, they said that don't go there. But yeah, they went very nice there. And so Honiara, we just want to get there, do what we need to do and get out of there. That was the first uh, time we've ever experienced anything like that before. Um, I just went downstairs and kept myself out of sight and uh, pushed some flares up to Yoshi's feet so if he needed to use them he could. I don't know what else really there is to do, but it was all fine. I think they were just um, on the cans being drunk idiots, but uh, it still yeah, it didn't feel very nice, so I'm glad that they've gone. Even after our scare, we were all smiles making our final approach into Honiara. Since leaving Santo Island, we sailed over 1,000 nautical miles and spent 16 days at sea. Arriving with only two days to spare before Mali arrives and still with 66 litres of diesel in the tank. This sail was challenging in a new way, having no wind, not a lot of fuel and a schedule. Glassy days are going to become more common as we are approaching closer to the equator. I think it's time to get some bigger, light wind sails. That's another episode of Sailing Nanji. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. Yeah, it was a very gruelling sail from the time we left from Santo Island to when we arrived in Honiara. It was, a, it was a long time spent at sea and always on the move. And, it was just challenging because the distance wasn't that far, but we had light conditions and the stormy squalls and headwinds, so no fuel and sailing to a schedule. It was, it was yeah. everything was mounted against us, but we're pretty stoked we arrived here in time and we got the little man yeah. back, hey? Oh. Yeah, but don't sail to a schedule, it's so not fun. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so these videos are brought to you by our patrons. Uh, if you're enjoying these videos and you're following along, please consider becoming a patron. The money goes back into buying new equipment. So we managed to save up for a new laptop and uh, we're trying to save now for a new spinnaker. So Yeah, getting close to the equator here, there's a lot of light winds. So we really need those bigger light wind sails now to get us moving because yeah. we don't like our motor. <laughs> Thanks to all our new patrons that have joined the Nanji family, it, uh, it means a lot. So thanks to Paul, Cam, Terrell, Rob, David, Stacy. Big shout outs to Carla and David, legends. Van Life Underground, Michael, Anton, and Dan W. So cheers legends, thanks for getting on board. And a big shout out to Cam T for upping your pledge. Yeah. Well played mate. And then also to Adam. Legend mate, always chucking a few quid our way. So cheers brother. Yeah, thanks guys. And uh, Michael, we got the money for the school books and I'm off to buy some school books today. So thank you so much. Uh, that'll be in an upcoming episode. Cheers legends. All right, thanks guys for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. You. See ya. Coming up next on Sailing Nanji, we explain how to import a dog into another country and the day finally comes where we are reunited with our fur child Marley Man. <laughs>